so I want to start with a scripture a passage. It comes from John. It's the, uh, the prologue, they call it, to the Gospel of John. One of my absolute favorite passages, uh, and especially I love to read it around Christmas time. Maybe you've read it with your family this year, but if not, uh, I want to read a little bit of it to you. It's John chapter 1, verses 5, skip down to 9, and then through 13. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. The one who is the true light, who gives true light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. I mean, just beautiful language about Christ coming. And you'll remember that the Gospel of John, there's no description of the birth of Jesus Christ other than this. This is it. And it's just absolutely beautiful about who came into the world at Christmas. Now, I've been thinking about Christmas uh, 2020. And so I wanted to ask you to do something for me this morning. You've got sermon notes there. There's a blank. I wondered if you could choose one word, just, just one word, to describe how your Christmas has been during 2020, what word would it be? So why don't you take a minute now, just think a minute, and, and maybe take your pencil, pen, and write down that word. If you're watching at home, think about your word as well. If you could just describe one, use one word to describe it, what would it be? Now, you've probably thought of a word already. So here's what I want you to do. You, you guys have done this for me before. When I count to three, would you just shout out your word for me? You ready? Everybody ready? Shout it out loud so I can hear you. One, two, three. Yeah. A lot, a lot of interesting words I heard, uh, but I, I heard one that uh, probably is the number one word because I did a little survey before this sermon, and here's what I came up with. Here's the, the, the number one word that I kept hearing was different right? Somebody said different, I heard some of you say. And here's what we mean by that. Not necessarily a bad different, not necessarily a good different. It was just different. And then I had some people who said, for, for me, the word I would use is unusual. This was just unusual. I guess it means out of the ordinary, not like in the past. Uh, somebody told me, they said the word would be challenging. This has been a challenging Christmas this year, uh, walking through it with COVID and everything else that we've had to do. Somebody said, hey, it was all right. You know, it's all right. <laughs> I don't think they were really interested in giving me an answer. And then another one said, it was okay. I'm like, okay, well, all right, okay. And then, then I, had, uh, I had a couple of folks who told me, they said, for me, if I had to choose one word this year, it would be lonely. Because usually I'm with my family, and uh, my children will not let my grandchildren come to see me because they don't want to expose me and my wife to the to the virus. And then I've had a couple of people who honestly spoken and they said, you know what? It was just sad. I'm missing somebody I used to have around the table. It's just been sad. It's been a sad Christmas 2020. And then I had, uh, I was asking somebody yesterday and they said, oh, I'm just going to say it's just weird. This is just weird. This whole thing is just weird this year. You know, it just wasn't the same. We, we tried to make the best we could of it, right? Because it just wasn't the same. But then I asked some of my staff, and, and uh, I got some really good answers there. From, from some of my staff, one of, them, one of them said, hey, for this year, the word I would use is family because I've had the chance to be with my family in a time of need where I couldn't in the past because of all my obligations at the church. I had somebody say, uh, it, the word I would use is contented. It's just been, I'm just contented with it, you know? I just, I'm okay with it. Uh, someone else said it's copacetic, meaning it's, it's very satisfactory. Isn't that interesting that we would say that about this kind of strange COVID Christmas that we've all experienced? I had two others. One, one stood out for me. The word that they used was special. Now, not special as in, you know, that was really a special kind of year. It, it was special in the sense of it was really good. So it was special because there was less chaos didn't have as much stuff going on, especially around the church, although we were very busy, but we didn't have a lot of the things that we normally have that we feel that, you know, we need to participate in. So he said, less chaos and more Christ. That's what this Christmas has been about. It's been special. 
And then, and then one that really shouldn't be a surprise that I love a lot. It, the word was holy. It's just been holy this year. I just sense God's presence in a different way this year. I suppose, I wondered if we'd ask the kids that were here or kids watching at home what they would say. Because it's interesting from a kid's perspective, they may say, hey, this was the best one ever. Or this was just great because maybe they don't perceive everything that's going on around us. It's interesting because how we see Christmas is, it's a matter of perspective. It, it, it's, it's where we are in life for some of us. It, it's where we are, uh, what we're going through and, and what we're experiencing. And so it's a matter of perspective. But there's one word I'm pretty sure none of us chose and none of you at home chose. You know what that word would be? Perfect. Oh, it was the perfect Christmas. I, I just don't think we would say it was perfect this year for a number of reasons. You know, uh, some of these words that I've been using and heard might apply to that first Christmas when Jesus came. Think about it. Different for Mary and Joseph. Probably that would be a good word for them to use. This night was different. This place was different. Uh, probably would have said this was a challenging Christmas, the very first Christmas. This was this was, to some extent, a lonely Christmas. I mean, because we didn't have a midwife and others there to help us birth this child. They would have probably used some of these same words. You know, they might have added a few others. There's probably some words like this floating in the air back then when Jesus was born, like fearful or fear, hopeless. We're, we're under the oppression of the Romans. And, and another word that I, I thought would most likely apply would be just, it's just dark. It's just dark. And, and those probably were present during that first Christmas. All of those were. But looking back on it from our perspective, from what we know and what we've experienced uh, here in 2020, we could probably say that first Christmas was perfect. Now, that doesn't mean that everything fell in place like it was supposed to uh, from Joseph and Mary's perspective necessarily. But here's what it means. It was not the perfect commercial Christmas, but it was the perfect Christian Christmas Here's why. Because everything came together exactly as God had planned it, perfectly matching Scripture's prophetic voice all those years. This was the plan that God had laid out, and it was finally time for it to occur. And every piece of it came together exactly as it should have. In the midst of this incredible imperfection on that first Christmas perfection came together. Isn't it beautiful that that happened then? But here, here's the thing about perfect. And if you've ever tried to have the perfect Christmas or the perfect get-together, you'll find out that perfect isn't easy. It's not. I mean, the chaos that they must have experienced then, giving birth in a stable or a cave or without help, I mean, it, it had to have been difficult. But it was perfect. And here's what makes it perfect, that he came, that God came to earth in Christ Jesus, that he now, because he came then, he's here with us now, and he's always with us and will be with us. That's what makes it perfect. But, but I chose a different word as I was thinking about words for, for, that I would use to describe Christmas 2020, and, and I'm, I'm not exactly... It's not descriptive necessarily of, uh, of uh, the experience, but it's descriptive for me of what we've experienced. And the word I came up with was light. I, I don't know, you know, I'm not talking about lightweight or simple. I'm obviously talk, talking about light as in light coming into the darkness. Maybe it's because we've been focusing on the star and the, the three kings following the star or something. But this, I, I have sensed that in 2020, that Christmas for me has been about the light of Christ coming into a dark world. John said it this way. We read it a minute ago. He said, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. And, and then he goes on to say in verse 9, the one true light who gives light to everyone was coming into the world. And it's like at the time, you can imagine this. I, I, we, we weren't there, so we don't really know, but we've been told this is what it was like, that it would be like there's this giant dark room that people are living in. 
And, and this incredible light, all of a sudden, one night, a star burst. And then before you know it, angels, and they fill the sky where the shepherds were, and, and light fills the room. And, and what happens then is that it's like the darkness flees to the corners. Maybe, maybe it even, you know, it, it hides for cover. It runs for cover because light has come into the world. But, but here's, here's the reality. You know, the day after Christmas, the day after the day after Christmas, which would be today, that first Christmas, there was still darkness around. You know, it's not, it's not like all of a sudden everything changed and everything became light and everything was happy, happy, happy. That's not it at all. In, in fact, the only ones who probably ex experienced and felt some incredible change and something magnificent had happened would be Joseph and Mary and some shepherds who came to investigate what they had been told. But everything else was pretty much the same. The people were still under the oppression of the Romans. The people were still suffering. But you know, what makes it perfect is not that miraculously the darkness of that night uh, went away, but it's that light is coming. Hope is coming. The rescue plan that God had laid out from the very beginning was now underway. The, the, the Messiah is with us, and we can expect that somewhere down the road, somewhere we're going to be saved from all of this, and all of this darkness that we're living under is going to be driven out. He's come. And so there is the reason for the perfection in the imperfect night. Light was coming. You know, the Bible teaches us that, that light, as it's used throughout the Bible, and it's, it's used often, uh, it's interesting to go and, and search and see how often it's used. It always represents a symbol of the goodness of God. Light represents grace and hope and beauty and, and all that God is. While darkness is always associated with evil or sin and despair. I mean, there's no, no wonder that in Star Wars, you know, it's like, you know, come, come on over to the dark side because of what it represents. But Jesus, when he comes and when he came, he brings light where there is darkness, wherever it is. His light overcomes the darkness. Now, I don't know if you've ever experienced that or not, but some of you probably have. Some of us have been in a place in our life in this day and age where we felt like the room all of a sudden got really, really dark. We got some bad news or we heard um, about someone who was suffering and hurting that we loved so much. Or maybe it was somebody in our family who passed away. And we just felt like darkness was covering us up. And there's no way that that darkness will ever go away until... All of a sudden, God, in some beautiful way, steps in, and it's like light flooded the room. And all of a sudden, you knew, even though there's tremendous despair and darkness, you knew that somehow, I can't understand it, but it's going to be okay. Things are going to be okay. Maybe different, but it's going to be okay. Jesus brings light where there's darkness. This is what he said about us. John chapter 8, verse 12. I love this passage. Jesus, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, here's what he said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you don't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. You know, you might want to make a note of that, John 8, 12, and maybe go back and write it by the word that you used to describe Christmas 2020 because if you'll read that passage when you feel like the darkness is closing in, you'll be lifted up. And you'll know there's hope. Because here's, here's what light represents for me, and maybe for you too. The first thing it represents is hope. Light represents hope. Psalmist uh, David wrote in Psalm 27, he says this, the light, the, I'm sorry, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He's putting his whole trust in the Lord. The Lord is the stronghold. That's like a safe place where you can go. He is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I was thinking about light. Uh, uh, anybody get flashlight? a flashlight this Christmas? Anybody? We get them at our house. I got, I've got a drawer full of them. It's like every year, hey, you want a new flashlight? I'm like, okay, thanks. 
And so uh, my granddaughter's got, got one. I think Debbie buys them for everybody, so she bought them one. So, so they, they're here visiting right now. I came in yesterday, and so they got their flashlights out. We're right in your eye, and it's just blinding you, those bright flashlights. And I was thinking about flashlights because flashlights, the light, when you turn it on, the light radiates from the source, right? It radiates from the source. And, and then this is what it does. It, it, it gives you, when, when you turn that light on, it gives you a sense of direction. Now I can see what's in front of me. I can see if there's something I'm going to trip on or something I need to go around. I can go this way. But here's the other thing a light does for you. It gives you security, doesn't it? It makes you feel secure. It's like, hey, now I can see what's out there. I don't have to worry about what I can't see. And so I feel safer with the light. That's what this light does. Hope replaces fear, just like light drives out the darkness. Here's the second thing it represents for me. It represents life. Light represents life. Think about it. Where the sun is shining, the S-U-N is shining, there is life. There is growth. There is new growth. Things start to thrive when the sun shines. When the sun comes out, it's like the, the trees and the bushes and the flowers all stand up. Because the light is shining on them. There's life there, and they're producing more life. John said in chapter 1, verse 4, this, The Word, capital Word, that means Jesus, gave life to everything that was created. And His life brought light to everyone. He gives us life. And He actually says in John 10, 10, it says, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. We're so, we receive that from Jesus. And it, he gives it to us through a relationship with him. Because once we're in this relationship with him, you know what we can say? We can say, I, it doesn't matter what happens down the road. It doesn't matter whether I can see in front of me or not. Christ is with me, and I'm okay. And so he gives me life. Apart from Christ, we, we literally live in darkness. It's true. And, and, and then here's the third thing that it represents for me. Light represents the truth. Uh, the, the older I get, the more important that becomes because there's so much untruth out there in the world. There's so much uncertainty out there in the world. There's a lot of untruth out there in the world that the world wants you and me to believe. But the light, Jesus Christ, the light represents truth. Here's, here's what John wrote about that, John who was with Christ, the Word. Here's what he wrote. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Grace and truth. It's the true light illuminating the truth about our sin. It's, the, it's that light that teaches us the truth about ourselves and our need for a Savior. And when that light shines on us, it's like we, we see ourselves for who we are and for how much we need him in our lives. But it also shows us the truth of what's around us. This is truth we can believe. And so I chose light because 2020 has felt a, a lot like a year of just way too much darkness all the way around. And Christ and Christmas, um, His light in the world today and in us gives us hope. It gives us life and it gives us truth. Because He came, we, we don't have to walk in darkness anymore. But the decision to live either in the light or the darkness is entirely up to us, you and me. He came into the world. Look at look what we, we read as we started today. He came into the very world he created, but look what it says. The world didn't recognize him. It says he came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed and accepted him, that's you and me, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. But here's how much he loves us. He's never going to force his light on us. He never does. He draws us toward his light. As I uh, reflect over Christmas 2020, here, here's what I'm reminded of, and, and I think it's a beautiful thing. You know what? You and I need Christmas. We need it every single year. And we probably needed it more this year than we have in a long time. We need Christmas. We need Christ to be born in a manger. We need an imperfect Christmas that somehow became perfect 
We need to be able to walk in the light and not in the darkness so we feel safe and secure and know where we're going. You and I need Christmas. We need, as one of our staff members said, we need less chaos and more Christ, not just at Christmas, but every day. And so I, I, I wanted to show you a little video. I want to take you back. This is probably the best um, depiction of what it might have been like that first Christmas that I've ever seen. It's called The Christ Child. And I want you to just watch this uh, with me, if you would. Shalom Lake. Dan Baha. Kaysu. Meanness. I can't tell you how many times I've watched that and just the idea that that was the first Christmas and maybe it looked something like that. And when the wise men came, uh, the story tells us maybe he was two years old or so at the time and they 
I love the reaction of the, of the wise man. I, I love Mary taking Joseph's hand, placing it on her belly so that he could feel Jesus move. I, I just love the fact that, that Christ was born like that for us so that we could have hope and we could have life and we could have truth. But, you know, um, he doesn't uh, force it on us. And so we've been, we've been using the We Three Kings, and today I, I wanted to use the guide us to thy perfect light. Guide us to thy perfect light. Because I have to be guided to the light in order to be guided by the light. And so that's my prayer for the world this year, that we would be guided to the light so we could be guided by it. Here's some next steps for you this week to think about. Maybe you've experienced some darkness this year and you need Christ to bring light, to flood light into your darkness. Or, or maybe you just need to have a better understanding of how this light can impact you in your life and you can ask him to help you understand it. Or maybe this is our call for the coming year. I will help others experience the light of Christ so that they don't have to walk in darkness anymore. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ that on that imperfect night many, many years ago he stepped in perfectly just as we needed him to and just as you had planned. Thank you that because he came and because he is the light in our darkness that we do have hope, we do have life, and we do have the truth. So help us, God, to seek and to follow that light every single day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.